Hello and welcome back to another done deal car review and today we're reviewing the Audi A6 Avant. So the Avant means it's an estate, the boot is ginormous and it's got some amazing features just like these blacked out roof bars, these 21 inch wheels and this 360 degree camera. Anyway, more on those key features in a short moment but let's just take a look at the A6 Avant. It has so much presence. Yes, this has a bit of a black pack, a star pack. It's got 21 inch alloys that make it look all that much better, but it does really, really look great. Now prices for this will start at about 52,000 euros plus delivery charges. Now this particular one, it's got a few more gimmicks. You're gonna spend upwards of 60,000 euros. Now, if you'd like to see Audi A6 is for sale, currently on Done Deal, hit the link up there. We've got a network of trusted dealers that are out there to make sure you can buy safely, securely, and to take all the uncertainty out of it. And that's why I'm here. You can ask me questions. I can help you along with your buying process in the comments. So make sure to subscribe and let's get into the review. Now, the interior of the A6, wow. We recently test drove the Mercedes E-Class and I was blown away by the interior in that. However, potentially, this could be nicer. I don't know, you let us know in the comments what you prefer. But for now, we'll have a little bit of a gander. So as you sit in, first things first, seating position, it's unbelievable. It's very adjustable, however, it's manually adjustable and in a 60 odd grand car, maybe you'd expect a little electric button, but we'll leave that alone and we'll push that to the side because the rest of in here is absolutely fantastic. Quickly to touch on storage, you've got storage under here, you've got some drink holders there, you've got a glove box that is lockable, it's currently locked so I can't actually open it, and you've got some door cars there with a drink holder. Now, of course, this being an Audi is adjustable, which big fan of, really, really like that. So let's turn this on and have a little listen to the little noise it makes. I don't know if you could hear that, but it's almost like, hello and welcome to the Audi A6. We're going for a nice drive. And that's the thing about this. I can really see myself munching up the miles. The steering wheel is really nice. This is the upgraded flat bottom steering wheel. And whilst it's not as nice as the steering wheel in the A5, which we recently reviewed, it is very, very nice. Now, the infotainment system. We're gonna break this up into three parts. First, the upper section, then the lower section, and then in front of you here. So, the upper section. This is all about your media. So, first things first, it's got an inbuilt sat-nav, which works really, really well. Now, it's also got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, wireless so no need for those long little wires and actually it's really instant so within 10 seconds of you being in the car it's already connected now all these screens come with haptic feedback so there's a real successful touch feeling even though it is touch and there's no knobs other cool features is you can check the weather and you can know Ooh, is it hot enough to to fly the drone is it windy enough it's all there in front of you you can also check the news you can see what's going on with brexit or see what's going on with COVID 19 updates really really handy and it's all live and up to date other cool features well there's one massive massive cool feature and that is when you pop it into reverse or press this button down here you can see the 360 degree angle very very impressive and actually it works was you're driving too, which is really, really cool. So that is the media, very impressive, really, really well kitted. It's a lot of spec actually, even for a 63 grand car. Then you move down here. Now all the knobs are gone, which it can scare people a little bit. And being honest, that actually doesn't bother me because this is so cool and it's so gimmicky. And when your friends or your family get in the car, they will be impressed. You've got the slide up and down for your heat. You've got all your different buttons, your heated seats. The only drawback I see with it is 
as you're driving on a long trip down to Cork and you're raking in those miles and you're thinking, oh, I think my peaches are a little bit warm. I might just turn down the heated seats. As you go to do that, check how my eyes come off the road and all the way down to here. I feel like that is maybe a little bit unsafe. Now saying that, if you were to have this car, if it was yours, you owned it, you'd probably get very familiar with where each button is and you wouldn't really, it would become second nature is what I'm trying to say. Now move it over here to the third part. Now this doesn't have the virtual cockpit. I would recommend spending those extra couple hundred euros and getting that because that is a game changer. However, even so, it's got your revs on the left, your speed on the right, your fuel, your temperature, and then you can make small adjustments. You can see what radio station you're on, all the usual kind of things. So yeah, overall the interior in here, it's, it's a lot to take on, but it's very impressive and I'm a big, big fan. As we open up the rear door, like a lot of cars, they open nice and wide, which means getting that baby seat in is gonna be absolutely no bother at all. And the ice fix points, easily accessible. However, I do worry, like the A5, that you could lose these attachments. Now, once your babies grow up and they become young men or young women, they're gonna need a little bit more space. And the good news is there is plenty. Being an estate car, none of the headroom is compromised back here. Loads of knee room. You got a little bit of storage under here. And actually, I do quite like the hard back on this. It means young kids, when they're kicking the seat in front, saying, mom, are we nearly there yet? It's not gonna annoy the driver. Other nice features, 12 volt socket. Now you can get a little bit of a climate control here in some of the upgraded models. And last but not least, you've got no drink holders, but you do have a small little storage compartment down there. And that's basically it. One negative thing I would say is there's a bit of a transmission tunnel. It's quite large. So if you're gonna have a third passenger, it's gonna compromise their foot room, but it's a small price to pay really. If you're interested in buying an Audi A6 Avant, then the chances are you're interested about the boot and what it has to offer, the space, everything like that. Well, the good news is we're about to explore it. So at two clicks of the button, now often this doesn't work for me on the YouTube, but today it's working. The boot opens and you are greeted with 565 litres of pure bliss space. It's really, really practical. You can just throw anything in there, golf clubs, anything. You can take a trip to Woody's, you can take a trip to Ikea and you will struggle to fill it up here. And if you do, then no problem. Now watch this. The seat revolts down. It basically catapults down, which is really handy because you might think I'm, I'm just being funny, but in some of the rivals, you'll have to walk around here, pull the seat down, and it can be a little bit of an ordeal, particularly if you've got loads of shopping bags. Another nice feature is there's some small little storage down here, but if you dig even deeper, we have a spare wheel, which is really, really nice. Big fan of spare wheels. The reason being is if you break down on the side of the road late at night, you're not stuck there waiting for a recovery truck. You can actually just change yourself. So all in all, boot space is fantastic. And I didn't mention when you fold down those seats, it goes to over 1600 liters. And that is a very, very big boot. Now, when it comes to driving the A6 Avant, it's really, really nice. So we've come to a national road because I feel like motorways, national roads, that's where an Avant belongs. And it drives really, really well. So it has lane correction. So you can see there, I wouldn't advise doing that, but it will correct me so I don't veer out of my lane. I do like that. It has cruise control. Now, if you want adaptive cruise control, I have the very sorry news that it's gonna cost well over 1500 euros anyway. An adaptive cruise control is basically where the car will slow down when the car in front of you slows down. Now, I really do, let me put it this way, if I was buying it, I would think long and hard about getting it because it's a fantastic extra. In terms of engines, so this has got a 40 TDI engine. So the badging, it's beyond me, but that basically means it's a two liter TDI but it's got 204 horsepower. So plenty of poke, particularly in the low gears, loads of torque. The seven speed gearbox is seamless. It's a little bit revvy around town, but other than that, it's actually really, really good. You can knock it into manual mode and use these 
paddles here and they've got a really nice finish on them. They're actually really, really premium feeling. But the reality is you'll drive it in auto 99% of the time. Now, when it comes to handling, interestingly enough, this car has a thing called EDL, which is electronic differential lock. Now, that's something you usually see on a rear wheel drive BMW, but this is a front wheel drive Audi diesel. So it's a bit random, but what it means is basically at if one wheel starts to spin faster than another wheel, it will lock up so that both wheels spin simultaneously. It doesn't have a huge effect, but I'm guessing it's to do with the extra weight of the car is why they've added it in. As a whole, this car, when you sit it on the motorway, you're gonna get five and a half liters per 100 kilometers, and it's just gonna drive like a dream. You've got all your little gizmos here, and you'll just enjoy every minute you're having it. If you're a long time viewer of the Done Deal YouTube channel, then you'll be very familiar with the next segment. And if you're not, subscribe and join us on our epic adventure reviewing every new car to market. Jokes aside though, we actually are out there trying to bring you guys the best information we can so when you buy your next car, you go in informed and you go in confident. So, this next segment is three of our favorite and least favorite things. Let's begin with the latter, our least favorite. So number one, is actually more a dig at Audi than it is at the A6. And it's the branding and the badging that they use. So this is technically a 40 TDI. Now that would nearly suggest it's a four liter or it's 400 horsepower. I really don't understand. And the A5 that we reviewed recently was a 35 TDI and then they have a 50 TDI and it makes no sense. And number two, quickly, it's these exhausts. And number three is to do with the key. Now, very recently we actually reviewed the Seat Leon, and I'm gonna go ahead and say the Leon's key was a little bit more premium than the Audi key, which is weird, because they're all part of the same family. But as you'll notice, these are all kind of nitpicking things. So let's talk about three of our favorite. Number one on our favorite things about the Audi A6 is the indicators. I love the way they sweep across. Number two is these 21 inch alloys. And it's not because they're 21 inch and gigantic, but actually because they're just subtle. I find nowadays all the wheels are diamond cut with different colors and different spokes to try and look cool, but less can be more. Shotgun not paying for new tires though. And last, but most certainly not least, is the concept of the A6 Avant. I don't think there's another car manufacturer in the world that has mastered the estate car as well as Audi. Well, there you have it. That is Dundee's review of the Audi A6 Avant. And after driving this for a little while, I'll leave you with one thought. And it's that if you're thinking of getting kind of a halfway SUV, something like an Audi Q5 or a BMW X3, then maybe rethink it and buy a nice A6 estate because you'll probably get a lot more value out of it. Now in saying that, I actually think for 63,000 euros, this is potentially one of the best value cars on the market. You're getting a lot of spec for your money. We hope you've enjoyed the review. If you did, leave us a comment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification, and we'll see you in the next video very, very soon. Thank you for watching. Stop, start coming into play there.